So what's the next big thing in wireless? We believe we've got the answer to that question. And here's a hint, it's not 5G. Join me in just a moment when I interview CTO and co-founder of Mimosa Networks, Jamie Fink. All right, everybody, we're back, and uh, welcome to another episode of Wi-Fi Now TV. My name is Klaus Hetting, and this, of course, is the show that brings you all the stories and not least all the great people from across the Wi-Fi industry. So uh, now, as the cellular industry is contracting, uh, vendors and uh, the telcos as well are searching hard for the next big thing in wireless, and of course, many think that 5G is going to be the next big thing. Uh, meanwhile, my guest today, and by the way, also myself, uh, we think otherwise. So I'm excited that uh, Jamie Fink of Mimosa Networks is with us today, and we'll get to him in just a moment. Before we do that, I just want to make sure that you know that we're taking Wi-Fi now, the Expo and Conference to London, UK, this October 25th to 27th, less than two weeks to go, and already more than 300 super passionate Wi-Fi people have already registered for this event and so can you. So uh, we have lots of expert speakers including Jamie Fink by the way. So go to our uh, website at wifinow.international check it all out. If you have any questions drop me a line at klaus at wifinowevents.com. So that's it for my promotional message this week and uh, without further ado I'd like to introduce my guest for this week and that is CTO and co-founder of Mimosa, Jamie Fink. Jamie, great to see you and welcome to the show. Great seeing you again, Klaus. Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. Jamie, uh, for the folks out there that are not familiar with Mimosa Networks, uh, give us the, you know, the short version of what you guys are all about. Yeah, absolutely. So we started the company um, coming out of actually of the, of the fiber in the DSL industry. I, I like to call myself a reformed fiber guy. Um, largely because we saw that the, the cost to deliver fiber simply didn't make sense in virtually any market anymore except for the, the newest and densest of cities. And we had extensive back background in wireless technology and saw that the Wi-Fi technology um, and making modifications to that to, could really evolve it using this MIMO technology to move it into markets where it's never worked before. And that, we believe, is where most of the population of the globe lives, which is in cities and suburban environments. And that's where we need better fixed internet. And that's what Mimosa does. So we focus on delivering wireless technology in these densest markets for the first time for fixed internet to deliver fiber fast speeds. So you're making also fantastic progress, by the way, on this, uh, Jamie. But uh, just give us the breakdown on what you think are the drivers for this uh, this advancement in fixed wireless access, uh, you know, technology, I guess. This is what's bringing the price to per performance ratio down. Is that not correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the I think there's a couple things. I think the consumer driver really is obviously there's a tons of new applications coming out. I think that the the modern world that we know already, you know, we're even underconnected in places like Europe and the U.S. But generally speaking, um, fundamentally, there's a shift, of course, towards you know people watching video online, and you know the, the cellular network certainly can't carry that load forever, um, and that's that's clearly the driver there. I think a lot of people would tell you, oh, it's all about VR and AR and things like that, but um, the reality is, hey, let's just get started with some good bandwidth. Um, the things that are enabling it technologically, though, are really chip technology that is you know, advanced because of the Wi-Fi and thankfully actually the LTE industry. Wi-Fi and LTE are really kind of coming together technologically from the core things that, that support the technology. What we've done is taken that to a new level by making Wi-Fi actually friendlier by being able to make it spectrum, to do spectrum reuse technology. So being able to take a channel and reusing it across a neighborhood means that I don't have to take up all the channels like different Wi-Fi applications typically do. So we can get scale now and drive that using the Wi-Fi chip technology to get the cost we want. Right, exactly. So, so you're, you're also really starting to use MIMO in a completely different way, like high order MIMO, and also driving down the cost. And we're really talking about bringing down the cost of a unit from a number of thousands of dollars to uh, uh, some hundreds of dollars. And that has opened up for an entirely new market. Can maybe elaborate a bit on that? Because we're talking about rolling out, for example, uh, fixed wireless to the home in suburban areas, even in, well, in developed markets and in emerging markets, right? 
Right, exactly. So I think there's, there's two different models that we really look at when it comes down to these high density markets. And, you know, really, really fundamentally speaking, if you look at the costs, like so fiber, for example, t typically is about twelve to thirteen hundred dollars per subscriber. What we've been able to do is kind of erase that down. And even if you're in rural areas or moving into suburb suburban and urban areas, Wireless, fixed wireless to deliver hundreds of megabits and soon gigabit speeds uh, really comes to about in between $200 to $300, depending on you know, a couple of different factors in the way it scales. So our goal here is to make sure that we're, we're, we're stimulating the industry by making sure the cost of the premise equipment and the installability of this is very easy. So in suburban environments and single family homes, you know, you're typically gonna have an installer come out, but in developing markets, when you're moving into you know, high rise buildings that are really old with ancient architect infrastructure and things like that, we eventually wanna to drive towards more of a self-installable model. And that will obviously help because those ec economies can't scale like ours, ours scale with you know, $50, um, you know, 50 euro broadband, for example, or you know, we need to really carve that far, much, much further down to make it broadly available in other markets. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're seeing some interesting developments uh, just recently. For example, uh, Google Fiber now also becoming Google Wireless ISP, presumably having, uh, they have invested in Wireless ISP. Do you see that as a sign of uh, this Wireless ISP uh, market going through a renaissance here? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's uh, everything has changed in the last six months. Um, you know, both you know Google uh, purchasing WebPass. Uh, actually, I was lucky enough to be here in, in Vegas at the Wispa show, and uh, Google for the first time came and did the keynote special session. So, if you don't believe they're getting into wireless, they really are. Um, so, also they happen to be my ISP at my building in San Francisco. So, I've been really dog fooding this for so much time, for such a long time. So not only am I a believer, but you know, I'm also using now Google as an ISP, which is really cool. Um, so it's, it is, I think it's gonna help everybody in this space because the challenge here is you have a whole bunch of new ISPs that have to be stimulated. Um, you know, the 5G guys are gonna go after 5G technologies and really expensive spectrum. But what we're talking about here is sub six gigahertz spectrum and using Wi-Fi spectrum and probably eventually the three gigahertz spectrum as well. Uh, that's really gonna open up a huge bunch of opportunities that will not be nearly the cost of very expensive license spectrum. Right, exactly. It's exciting time. So, you know, if we're going to answer what's the next big thing in wireless, <laughs> I believe it's fixed wireless access together with the Wi-Fi component is, of course, I have to say that. As yeah. well. But I hope you agree with me on that. And I think we're, we're so far, I think only a handful of people, but presumably including Google, which is uh, more than a handful, I guess, that actually starting to believe in this. But let's get a little bit into the challenges because there are challenges in this uh, in this area and and what what do you think are the biggest ones i mean somehow this technology has to get out it has to get deployed do we need a new industry structure for this or and how do we see that what do you think yeah great question um you know fundamentally this is this is the first time this is being done in these cities and what you're talking about now is a much like wi-fi a very high density constellation of base stations or access points being distributed through neighborhoods this uh -huh. is a very short range architecture and that brings up a lot of challenges that people are going to think through which is how am i going to get reliability of backhaul to all these locations and you know fiber is really wireless's best friend but fiber still won't be everywhere so we really need to have a number of different functions from um, you know, kind of a standardized approach to installability in, in the consumer piece, but we also need to have better access to utility poles. Um, we would need to have better access to dark fiber, but more importantly, we don't have fiber in these places, so we need a, a whole ecosystem of uh, backhaul to be able to light this up, and that's gonna be the 60, 60 gigahertz, 70 gigahertz millimeter waves. So everybody's talking about millimeter waves for last mile in, in, in the 5G, context and we know for a fact that it can't work in any case where there's foliage so the, using the frequencies we're using for the last couple hundred meters and then using the millimeter waves for the backhaul to get to those neighborhoods is really the right solution so we think it's going to be really a, a, an ecosystem of, of partners and vendors and ISPs that have to come together and really solution this together and make sure that we're all moving in the right direction and also you know coordinating with each other about how we use the spectrum Right. So do you think that there will be uh, new wireless ISPs, uh, you know, uh, growing to meet this challenge in, for example, the United States? Will we have to rely on Google to do this? And I know obviously they're active doing this already. Or will we need to rely on, you know, the big established carriers getting into to this part of the business? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, it's a tough question because I think it's going to be both. Um, you, you know, when, when an independent comes in and I'm seeing them pop up 
um, you know, funding themselves to go off and take entire city areas. They're not really yet growing to being national because you really go area by area. Uh, but this can build so, so much faster than any other network that we've done because it's all wireless and it's typically unlicensed technology. So you're not waiting for a spectrum auction. You're not waiting for any of that. So I think the small guys will move first, but that will have a fast tail with the Googles and, and others in this space once they realize how competitive this is and how damaging it can be to people that haven't really been upgrading their networks. And that leaves them very, very weak. And there's, you know, just even in the U.S., um, we have 16 million people still stuck on ADSL, and then there's probably, I think, 34 million homes that aren't even uh, connected to what the FCC's definition of broadband is. Globally, that's a ridiculously bigger number. Um, so I think our, you know, we have our work cut out for us, and each market's going to need um, entrepreneurs, but also there, are, there are, I think the bigger guys will come on as they see this as a viable option that's far cheaper than going after 5G spectrum. I think so as well. And, and let's just stay for a moment with the 5G story because I've been critical of it, you've been critical of it. But let, let me start with a, a sort of open question here. What do you think the role of, generally speaking, of unlicensed bands uh, relative to the licensed bands are for this, shall we say, this new coming together uh, of all of this into hopefully a new service fabric for broadband? Can you comment yeah. on that? Yeah, so I mean, my take on this is that um, unlicensed, it, its biggest role is to stimulate economies. And it, it absolutely has done that the world over with Wi-Fi. Um, and the challenge even with Wi-Fi is getting Wi-Fi out there. So what I've, what I've been really a proponent of is you know, really establishing a, a combination of Wi-Fi together with fixed wireless because every time I talk to people in the Wi-Fi industry, they, they, all, they always have these discussions about how do you monetize free Wi-Fi? And you know, it's an oxymoron, you can't. Uh, it's free. So we have to have ways that, that cover it and use, use Wi-Fi for what it's great for, promotion and connecting people at, at, you know, immediately that really, really need it. But this network I'm talking about can be the basis for that. And it can yes. stimulate both much broader Wi-Fi growth. Um, now, initially, you know, would we love to use unlicensed spectrum for everything? Absolutely not. But it's the best place to grow quickly. And then we can move into these other spectrum, like I was referring to earlier, the three gigahertz spectrum and other. There's many other pieces of the network being opened up um, globally uh, to hopefully expand the, the you know, spectrum us usable for that so that we can keep Wi-Fi for Wi-Fi. Fantastic. Jamie, let's talk a little bit about being a startup because you have real experience in being a startup. And I remember I came to your offices, I think, uh, your new offices in Santa Clara, is it? Mm -hmm. right. about six months ago, and I was standing in front of your uh, network operations center wall, which is uh, quite substantial. And there's, you know, big screens, they're showing all your deployment, uh, deployed radios up there, and there's thousands of them. And you came, uh, you basically started from scratch, what, two, two and a half, three years ago. What's, what's the secret to doing that well in such a short period of time? Because I think what you've done is remarkable. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I knew one secret, but I guess I, the only thing I would really say is, um, is, is we have remain totally focused on this and not getting distracted by other applications and other products. There's so many things we can do in wireless, but we need to be laser focused on what we're doing for solving the connectivity problem and the ecosystem around that. Um, and even the, the funny thing is, even though we're focused, we still have to launch like 11, 12 products to build out an ecosystem of this stuff. So it, it's an incredibly fast moving, moving piece. Um, and ISPs have to believe that you know we're we're committed to solving the entire solution, not just bringing in one component and leaving it behind. Um, so we really have been very active in working with the industry and making sure that everybody's actually engaging in this, in this with us. And so um, I, I wish there was one secret, but really, it's, uh, you know, don't don't overpromise and and really go after execution. I do think you have a great team working for you, though. Thank you. you started with a great team, and that makes a lot of difference. I think. Yeah, I mean that that's absolutely number one. Um, you know, it's it, even with a great team, you know, it, it, it you have to be at the right place in the right time. And I, I think to your point earlier, the whole market's wrapping around to this right now. So yeah. we were crazy when we started this four years ago. So probably the best thing that we didn't do was get scared of that when people were yeah. saying. Why are you doing this? You know, it's telecommunications, it's hardware, and it's wireless. That's th that's three strikes in the venture capital world. So yeah. you know that that we've had to really overcome that. And uh -huh. uh, you know, luckily, my partner and co-founder is just an incredible gentleman and you know, inspirational man that's done four startups now. So you know, it's it's one one good thing is you know we have the team that it, has done this before, and that really really helps with everything. Which is fantastic. What do you think the next big thing for you guys? 
is I know you've got you, you've launched your uh, obviously your radios has been, have been around for a while. Your APs have now been launched. Uh, anything else in the pipeline that you want to say yeah. something about? So, so we're really um, at this point we're we're kind of like putting the cherry on top of things. So um, you know we we brought out all of the product suites to kind of take us from the data center into the neighborhood and now in and out to the home. And that just has been released recently. Um, mm -hmm. We're seeing first cities start to, to start to light up our technology. Um, in these kind of what we call these micro pop architectures. Um, and now what we've done is we started to do all of the really hard parts about being an ISP. And that that's kind of the things that you need to be able to quickly install. So having like an Android app to immediately install the customer, provision them, walk away in under an hour, mm -hmm. and then be able to leave behind technology that also determines if your problems are Wi-Fi or your problems in the network, because mm -hmm. now Wi-Fi experience is internet experience. So we actually have to be in the Wi-Fi industry to some, some degree to be able yeah. to make sure that the internet is good because Wi-Fi is the internet these days. So that, that whole troubleshooting experience and creating a fabulous experience for ISPs, we want to revolutionize that. Um, we did that in the past worlds in DSL and made it really easy to install. And this is completely new to this industry. So we want to kind of be a leader in that space. Fantastic, Jamie. It's so good to have you. And by the way, I should also say that if people are interested in knowing more about Mimosa Networks, of course, they can go to, is it mimosa.co? What's the URL? C, yeah, mimosa.co. Mimosa.co. Mimosa go there and check out all the great work that uh, Jamie and his team has been doing. And also, you get to meet Jamie and his team in London at Wi-Fi Now uh, on October 25th to 27th. So he's going to be there. And, and I very much recommend that you come meet him because he's a fantastic guy. And products are awesome. Um, thank you so much, Jamie, and come back and see us soon, all right? Thanks a lot, Klaus. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks. All right, that's it for today, people. And don't forget to go to wi now.international to register for our London event. Of course, well, you will get to meet Jamie, as I just said, and many other great companies in uh, Wi-Fi and in fixed wireless as well. Uh, I'll see you next week for another episode, and thank you for watching. Wi-Fi Now is a production of RCR TV News. To suggest a show topic or to learn more about Wi-Fi Now events, you can reach Klaus Heading at klaus at headingconsulting.com. To find out more about Wi-Fi Now and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.